what's up guys? Today, the George Camel channel is getting a whole lot classier. And no, it's not because of this dry cleaning job. Although I gotta say, the crisp collar isn't hurting anybody. I look good. I mean, really good. I'm talking about Ramsey personality and New York Times bestselling author, Rachel Cruz, who graciously agreed to take a spin with me in the old Tesla to talk all things money, life, kids, and contentment. And like me, Rachel is passionate about helping people get out of debt, build wealth, and actually have fun in the process. And have fun we do, just like on the set of our shared podcast, Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. She is a class act, she's a good friend, and did I mention Dave Ramsey literally raised her? Raised by Ramsey, coming soon to the Magnolia Network. JK, that'd be a killer show though. Chip and Joe, if you're watching. Shut up and take my money. But hey, you're in for a good time today and let Rachel know that you love her with a click on that like and subscribe button and share this with your partner in crime who you love to LOL with. Oh man. I feel like I'm in like the George Camel. You're in my universe. World. You're in the Spideyverse. Which has never happened. Congratulations. It you took know, you 10 years to little... finally get to the pinnacle of your career being on my YouTube channel. Okay, so people are very curious. Obviously, you grew up Dave Ramsey's daughter, but you've been a Ramsey personality now for almost the entire time you've been there. You had a really interesting kind of career trajectory stepping into that role. How did it all yeah. start? So I started speaking with my dad when I was 15. I learned early on that I enjoyed public speaking. I enjoyed, you enjoyed being, being on stage yeah. in front of people. And, yep. But then you go off to college, to UT, Knoxville. That's right. And you get a communication degree. Yes. And during that time, realizing, oh my gosh, what I learned about money, people my age had no clue. Like, they were signed up for credit cards. The stuff that you were loans. used to hearing your dad talk about. Your yes. friends were like, what? You yeah. need a credit score, Rachel. What are you thinking? Yeah. I remember thinking, you know, I'm 19 years old. I don't know everything. But I know enough that could really help college students, maybe high school students. So when I graduated from college, I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to get on stages and talk to high school students and college students about money. So for probably five years, this is before Ramsey Personalities existed. I just came on board. It's kind of a one-off and just said, hey, I'm going to travel to high schools, do high school assemblies, church camps, So talking camps. to the, the next generation to help yes. them avoid. It was more, Dave was like the emergency surgery and you're preventative medicine. I'm the preventative medicine. That's right. Love yep. it. Just fix me. Okay, so what has shifted in how you give money advice or the money advice you give over the last 10, 13 years. You know, it's funny because the overarching just principles that we talk about stay very much the same, but there would be things like the budget, like there's no budgeting app. People didn't do, you know. It was Excel it spreadsheets was Excel. and paper, like yep. pen and paper, that's all we had. Yep, so like the way you budgeted has changed. This feels very like horse and buggy, like, well back in Stuff my day, I we know. didn't have these cars. We got a paper, when's I did paper budgets forever? Wow. Yeah. That sounds horrible. So, Rachel, you notoriously don't care about coffee. Um, like, you're like, cool, I'll have coffee, but it's more about the caffeine and the vibes. Exactly. You don't really care about taste. Like, you will drink Keurig or Folgers and not complain, which makes you, I think, a good person. Truth, I wish I was that, I don't know, I had that, that low of a standard. Thank you know what you. I mean? Is that supposed to be a compliment? What's your go-to order? Um, what are you going to order right now? I know. Well, what I usually order is a chai tea latte. Okay, that feels very Rachel. So, do you do a dirty chai? So. No, but people suck to tell me again. It has espresso. That's so right. dirty should, chai means they should add... Should I do that? Yeah. I've got an event tonight. i got to be up late. That's right. Okay, I should do this it, right? is very exciting. Yes, do a dirty chai okay. latte. Okay. I truly love when I get to like teach you a new thing. <laughs> Not out of like a condescending, but like it feels special. That, There's like, a lot of things in life, George. I feel like you're like, this you is know someone's about first this? time like, experiencing no. a dirty chai. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. All right. I can't wait. Hi, what can I get you? Season's greetings. Hello. Hello. Can I, for my friend here, do a dirty chai latte? Is it a medium? We'll do a tall. Okay. Wait, you said medium? You're allowed to say that? Yeah, we're allowed to say medium. Whoa! Okay, <laughs> I love you for that. I'll do the pumpkin cream cold brew. That's my favorite. Hello. Hello! I'm the worst. Please don't ever do that again. You are the worst. You know worst. what? This is really Chill awkward. Out. Can I, can you spot me today? You got your card? Oh my gosh. I realized I didn't bring my wallet and I figured you're good for the money. George. You got your, uh, your no, debit card? I do have my, yeah, I got debit. You Thank you for Get your the generosity. Receipt, please. You know what? She loves being generous. Can we start a little pay it forward thing? We're starting a pay, pay for yours. Okay. Approved. Woohoo! 
All right, let's talk business. You ready? Okay, I'm back. Yep. Well, the this segment is called Millionaires and Cars Getting Coffee. So okay. was becoming, you know, you and Winston, obviously net worth millionaires, which just means that you have a net worth of one million or more, meaning your house, your mm-hmm. retirement accounts, your bank accounts, all that adds up to more than a million. Mm-hmm. Um, was that a goal for you too? Like, how intentional were you no. in getting there? Or is it just a natural byproduct? Yeah, I'd say, yeah, it was not a goal. We were not like, oh, we're going to shoot for this number or something. Okay. But I will say one of like our house, right? It was a big part of our net worth. And we, I don't know if lucked out's the word, but we got our house on a short sale. So we started off ahead. And granted, George, I'm going to, you know, I'm not unaware of the fact that like, we started off well. Like Winston didn't have student loans. I didn't have student loans. Like I understand yes. like- Yeah, how we, do you address that? Cause a lot of people off. go, well, Rachel, you're Dave's daughter. So you yeah. can't talk about money because you yeah. had it so good. Totally. And how I, do you respond to those people? I did. I mean, I'm like, I like, I you're get like, it. Yes. Because I think it's a both and. But I'm isn't like, that what they want to do for their kids? Like right. why would you well, not want to set up your kid for success? I know, I know. So yes, did my parents set us up well, start us that mutual fund, pay for college, all. Absolutely. But Winston and I, we do live below our means. We do invest for retirement. Like we, we are doing the things that we need to do to be successful long-term and we work hard. We, you know what I mean? Like it, like all of that plays into it too. Well, you're a very content person and you talk about that a lot. You're flaunting how content you are, how grateful you are. Why did that become a thing for you? Like you have a, a book called Love Your Life, Not Theirs. Mm-hmm. That's focused on contentment. Uh, when did you become passionate about this idea where, where is money meets contentment? Um, probably out of myself. I'm like that. My natural bent is not to be content. My natural bent is to just want more want and more. more. And go like, I don't have this yet. Yep. Yep. I'm a, I'm a spender. So for me learning like, oh my gosh, this stuff is not making me fulfilled like mm. and I know that mentally that's what's crazy it's like you could know it in your brain but you're at you still are like looking for that but creating a habit that hit, or like you that. talk about it as like a practice a habit that you yes have to so then I realized you know money yeah even if it's in your budget what's your intention why 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 do you want it like what's the motivation behind it so which when I led to your to, other book know yourself know, know your, your money, money. Yeah. Oh my, it's all coming it together is. it's all clicking the contentment <laughs> journal yes because it's such an important part of money. It's the emotional part. That's not the facts and figures, but it's who you are and who you are when you're handling money is so key because you're the one that's handling it, right? So yes. when there's a big mistake or or a big win, it's because you've done it. Like you've chosen to invest in that thing or you've chosen to save or you've chosen to give. Like you're the one that's putting your money into action. And so when you can control you and you as a person are content, not looking for that stuff to fulfill you, uh, it's just a, it's a more joyous life. So that's beautiful. And what I, do you say the antidote to discontentment is? You have a great quote around this, and I can't think of it. Oh, in a heart filled with gratitude, there is no room for comparisons and discontentment. And that's where the contentment journal comes Good. in that you released. That was, yes. hey, if you just take make this a practice to sit down and be like, hey, what am I grateful for? Yes. You become more content with what you have, which leads me to your latest and most exciting, <gasps> oh, I know. maybe the most life changing product you've ever released, Rachel. It's a new book. Thank you, George. I'm glad for what I have. Your first children's book. It is. That is just beautifully. Illust- I mean, the content is great. Like, it's such a great, well-written let story. Just read, let me just read one little part from it. Oh, this is exciting. I've never been read to in a car. I might fall asleep. Uh, was there room for a camel in the children's oh, book? Oh, we did, did you- not do a camel. We should have, George. A camel? Did you put a llama in there? I'm sick of no. llamas getting all the good peel. We got uh-huh. the llama face. So all the little ones want stuff, right? So like... Okay. The opening line Give me is, a taste. Yeah, not long ago, in a forest of trees, a little squirrel said to her mom and dad, please, may I have a new ball? A teddy bear too? I just want some more toys, just anything new. So all the animals bought more and more. They gathered as much as their burrows could store. So then they end up buying everything, but it ends up filling up their homes. They can't see their table, their couch, their floor. Oh my gosh. And so That's in all America. of this mess, their things become lost, their toys start to break, and it makes them feel cross. Why does this happen? Why are we sad? Shouldn't new toys always make us feel glad? I'll tell you a secret. It's a good place to start. It's God's love and kindness that fills up your heart. And then it walks through understanding that like something happens inside of you and you don't need something new. And what really fulfills you? What is Mm. the thing that really fulfills you? 
Is that not precious? That's and then these so sweet cute. little oh, it's animals. Beautiful. It's so it's like nostalgic just, in a way. It's so pretty. So Simpler time. I wanted a message, George, that was like great to speak over kids. I'm like, I want kids to get this drilled into their hearts of who they are. But as a parent, and you'll probably learn this with me very soon when you read. Do you read to her? Do you read yet? Not She's yet. Still She's, she, doesn't, yeah, no. she can't even make eye contact, <laughs> let alone understand any words. I know. When you start to read her books, you will you will have your favorites. Mm. And usually it's the ones that you're like, oh my gosh, that's a message I needed to hear. It's written oh. for my four-year-old, but like... I needed to it's hear like that. It's like the kids' movies that actually the adults are like, that's, that's exactly such a right. Like in Kanto, The Gift Is You. You yep. know, like all of that, all of that's those beautiful. lessons. Well, I I'm think everyone what I have. should get a copy. If you have kids, you know Thank people you. with kids, someone's expecting, or maybe you just need the message and you want it with colorful il illustrations. <laughs> that's right. You know, Donald Trump, this is a great book that he can just Don. quickly. Pick this up. He likes a picture book. Pick this up. I didn't know that. I just, uh, you're telling me now for the first time. I'm nervous about raising like an entitled brat of a kid. And not mm -hmm. because the kid is bad, but because the world we live in, yeah. technology, social media, just, and, yeah. and we're at a place where we can gift this kid anything that they want. Mm -hmm. How do I curb that? Yeah, I can't speak on the social media side because my kids are too young for that. But I will tell you this, the hardest thing that I've had to realize and I've had to pull back as a parent and as a spender is I could just replace stuff or get like, or if like we're playing dress up and, you know, and they're like, we want jewelry. I'm like, oh, y'all don't have fun jewelry. Oh, just Amazon some because it's only $9.99 oh. and you get a whole pack of it. And mm -hmm. that's so fun. And we'll like, it's so easy to jump right in and want to fix a situation or add to a situation and buy something. Just through spending. Yep, through spending. So I had to even harness back and be like, oh my gosh, Rachel. Or like something would break. I'm like, we'll just, we'll just buy a new, like we can just go on Amazon. But I think your patterns day to day is what's going to set Mia up for what she's going to remember. Okay. And then there's going to be the exceptions, the fun trip, maybe the great purse one Christmas when she's 16 or like, do you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's the one-off exceptions yeah. that I think you're gonna be able to do and that you're gonna wanna do. And you know, I feel that with my kids. But what's the pattern day to day? And that's what I want to establish. The pattern day to day is not these like crazy, this crazy life. Okay, um, before we go, in honor of our shared podcast, Smart Money Happy Hour, I thought it'd be fun to do a guilty as charge. <gasps> Here's the guilty as charge question mm -hmm. of the day. Okay. Have you ever stalked someone on social media and accidentally liked or commented on an old post while scrolling? Yes. Oh no. But they were a bit, I think, and I can't remember, I remember unharding so fast. You know, the worst stalking I ever did. What's that? We were going on vacation, like this was years ago. And I kept looking up at the place that we were going to like see what it looked like and other people posting photos to it that were there. You know, you can click on mm. the location. Mm -hmm. I was doing that and then there was a wedding and I was like, huh? Oh. And the wedding was so glamorous. I was like, who's this? So then I like saw the bride and groom. So then I start stalking the bride and I went all the way down, George. I like knew what her dad did for a living. Oh my God. Like I went crazy. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Just a dark curiosity. But I went all the way down this girl's life and I'm like, I don't even know who she is. She's not even like famous, but she had like this extravagant wedding. So I completely stalked. Oh gosh. Well, no shame. I'm guilty. We've all been there. Have you? You're still a better person than all of us. Oh, 100%. I mean, exes, you know, you name it. And people from high school, you're just like, what are they? Oh, gosh, their life imploded. But it's kind of like you're, car, you're kind of just like one, <laughs> like I want to see, but I don't want to see. Uh, Rachel, where can people find you if they want to follow yes. you, watch all the things you're doing? Um, follow me on social at Rachel Cruz or my podcast, The Rachel Cruz Show, or Smart Money Happy Hour. Her favorite thing she does. It is very fun. I did tell someone. Well, it doesn't today. feel like work, if we're going to be honest. It's so great. It's so we're great. We're just chatting, having a good time. George, trying to laugh. this is amazing. Thank you for doing this. Well done. We uh, get to work together a lot, but this was on my turf. I and know. I, I appreciate George, you jumping into my universe. The George Camel world. It's pretty great. Can you ask the people to like and subscribe? Because you have a lot of those subscribers. You guys, like subscribe, comment, review, do all the things with this channel. Because it's so great. And y'all love George. I know you do. So just tell him. Admit it. That's just admit do. it with your fingers. That's all, That's you all you're do. doing. Well, well, hey, cheers. Cheers, George. A little different than our normal cocktail. It's probably I happy know. Hour. We got a little, little coffee coffee. But hey, this has been fun. If you want anyone else that's friends with Rachel, she knows a lot of famous people. So <laughs> let me know who you want to see on this series. And maybe we'll get Rachel and the whole crew in the back. Who knew? They were back there. Millionaire Club. That's what's up. That's it. Thanks, Rachel.
Huge thanks to Rachel for hanging out today. If you had as much fun as I did, please check out our podcast, Smart Money Happy Hour, which is on YouTube as well. This is a show where Rachel and I get to talk pop culture, what's going on in the world, how to afford a life you love, all with a drink in hand. I'll drop a link below to that podcast as well as her new children's book, I'm Glad for What I Have. You better believe this is a jewel on little Mia Campbell's bookshelf. Can't wait to read it to her. Make sure to let us know in the comments what your favorite part of this conversation was and who else you wanna see in this Millionaires and Cars Getting Coffee series. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.